All right guys, long time no video, I guess. Um, just haven't done a lot of stuff on the cars recently, but today we're gonna to be sorting out problems with the 86. Got to replace the water pump. Here's, here's one I made earlier. Here's a new water pump. Oh look, it's a Subaru on it. I, d I don't know what Toyota contributed to this car because every single part is a Subaru on it. I don't know if I've shown you guys this before, but like this bit here that says Subaru, Toyota literally stick a badge over the top of that that says Toyota. I've peeled it off and it just says Subaru underneath. So they literally just rebadge bits of it. But. Yeah, I also made this workbench, um, which is not quite finished yet, but it's fairly solid, it'll do. And as you can see, it's already full of shit. Um, but yeah, the water pump, this is why I need to replace the water. Well, no, it's not why, but this intercooler pipe basically sits like that, something like that, um, but further back, like in here. Um, and the problem is the back of it, as you can see, has had a few run-ins with the water pump pulley, um, which has kind of mashed the heads on the bolts, which made it a nightmare to get off. I'll show you underneath in a second, but Basically, I had to weld some new bolts to the old bolts because the heads were so fucked that you couldn't turn them or anything. They're like domed heads, so you couldn't get mole grips on them or anything. So I welded some new bolts to those old bolts so that I could then turn them. Um, so that's got them loose now. I've got the, um, the belt and everything off. So next job is literally just to drain all the coolant out and pull the water pump off. Um, I should explain, the water pump was leaking. That's why I'm doing this. Um, like this little, little hole there, little weep hole that... Um, it was leaking out of quite a bit and it has been basically since the last crash um, at Rockingham ages ago so yeah I think the intercooler pipe smashing into it then was enough to make it leak a little bit but it's like the coolant's only been going down a tiny bit so I just, just kind of ignored it but it's time we sort that out. The main purpose of this video is going to be doing stuff to the 350 so yeah I can't remember exactly what stuff I've got to do there's a ducktail spoiler to go on which is down here somewhere which needs painting there's these rear spats to go on but yeah quite a few bits to do and um, there's other stuff in the 350 to do like some wiring stuff maybe a new um, temperature gauge for the diff and the transmission um, sorting out the brake light wiring thing so that I can actually left foot brake without having to turn the brake lights off and some other stuff remaking like a new gauge mount and putting a kill switch in and probably loads of other stuff that I've forgotten so I'll stop rambling on and we'll just get on with fixing some stuff like this first and then probably breaking some stuff. So, let's go. Mmm, that smells good. All right, so the coolant's finished draining. I've just whipped the pulley off. So now we've just got to get these bolts off to get the actual water pump itself off. And as you can see, it all looks pretty gross under here. I did have a bit of an issue with the catch can. Um, one of the ports on the catch can was leaking quite a bit of oil out of it, um, which obviously isn't like a problem. It's not like a bad oil leak. It's just annoying because um, it just means oil got everywhere, so there's like residue all over everything now. Also, this was leaking, but I've just tightened that up, um, so hopefully no more leaks. But yeah, I do need, to, do need to clean under here a bit, I think. I mean, is there any point? It's just going to get filthy again. But whatever, let's just uh, whip these bolts off, see if coolant still pisses everywhere. I've drained it for ages, but there's still a few drops coming out, so um, probably going to get wet. We'll see. Cool. We'll put them in a safe place and probably forget where we've put them. I always don't bother putting overalls on because I'm like, ah, I'm not going to get messy. I'm just undoing a few bolts. And then here I am, like, shoving my arm up a oily, grotty engine bay. Oh, fuck, that one was tight. Oh, yeah, we're starting to leak. Cool. And um, what do we do with that bucket? Fixed. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's still a fair bit of coolant in there then, I guess. Cool. Get it? Cool. Oi. That's better. That's better. Sounds like I'm having a really long piss, but it's better. She's calmed down now, so let's see. Oh, nope. <laughs> nope, she hasn't. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Are we, are we done? Are we done? I think we're done. And we'll take the gasket with us because we've got a new one. Ta-da! I don't know why it was leaking then. I guess one of the seals inside has gone. Because it wasn't leaking from around the gasket. It was leaking from this bit. But, yeah, whatever. We've got a new one. So let's plonk that on. There we go, she's on. So now we've just got to get the pulley back on. Hopefully these bolts that I've used are going to be all right. I think they should be. They're not really much taller. Like the head's not much taller than the previous ones. So hopefully they won't get mashed into the intercooler pipe, but we'll see. Let's uh, get the pulley back on, get the belt back on, and then refill the coolant. Start her up and see if uh, anything leaks. Right, I've just spent some time bleeding it. Seems to run all right, no leaks. So we'll call that a success.
All right, so I didn't really film much of that because it was just a case of drilling a load of holes and putting a load of pot rows in. Same thing over and over again. Um, and yeah, they're all in now. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, the fitment's not too bad, considering it's an aftermarket one. I uh, didn't have to file anything down. Could have got it more sort of perfect around the bottom edge, but it's, um, it's good enough, I think. On the sides, it lines up nicely. And yeah, I actually really like the look of it. I wasn't too sure if I'd like it or not, but yeah, I think it looks really good, especially with the, um, the bumper spats at the bottom, which I've got on as well. Definitely like, makes the whole car look like a bit more aggressive. Like it doesn't just look like a, a normal road car now. Like it looks a bit more, a bit more drift car spec, I think. Oh, and before I forget, the reason that there's no rivets in the very end bits is because those bits were actually quite far away from like the, the actual boot underneath. Um, the rest of them were like sunken in fairly well and they were pretty close, but there's actually quite a gap between the surface of that and the surface of the boot underneath. So I didn't want to use a pop rivet and like have to bridge a massive gap because it probably just crushed the fiberglass. Um, and like break it so I mean I might get away with it but I'd rather not risk it like now it's all pretty much on I'd rather just leave it like that I don't think it looks too bad it's not that noticeable that there's some missing really although it is now I've pointed it out but yeah I don't think most people will notice really or think it looks too shit but whatever it's just a drift car in it it doesn't have to look perfect and also you'll notice it's filthy now because I've actually done a couple of drift days in between filming the bits of me drilling it and filming this so um, yeah it's fucking horrendous now and needs a wash but yeah that's pretty much done so we'll move on to the next job all right so another job we've got to do on the 350 is get rid of some rusty patches on the uh, chassis rails down here now i don't know how well it comes across on camera but that is pretty fucked like i mean if you put a screwdriver in it it just crumbles so um yeah it's pretty pretty bad if you can just touch it and it falls apart so we're going to cut out this sort of section here um, and just weld some new 2 mil thick steel in there. Probably gonna have to take this exhaust off. Um, so yeah, let's, let's give that a go. Alright, so it's not pretty, like the welding was pretty bad. I fucking hate MIG welding. Now that I've done some TIG welding, MIG welding seems so messy and horrible. Probably partly just because I'm bad at it, but yeah, it's not pretty. I didn't get that lined up very well, like flush with the existing bit, so it's, it's kind of like all sunken in, but whatever. It's, it's better than that, let's be honest. All right, that's, that's what we had before. So once it's painted and covered in under seal, it won't look that bad. So let's get on with that. All right, so now that it's painted, it's looking a little bit better. Still kind of stands out as being a bit out of place, but I'll stick some under seal on and it should sort of blend in a bit better. I've just done this side, put some under seal on. Um, and I mean, it looks out of place at the moment because it's all new and shiny where the rest of it's covered in shit. But once it gets a bit of road dirt on there, it'll blend in fairly well. So yeah, hopefully that'll be a lot better than rusty patches. Um, it's not the best job ever. Obviously I don't normally do stuff like this, so it's never gonna be that great. But like I say, it should be better than what was there before. So on to the next job, which is gonna be trying to mount a fan to this oil cooler up here. So probably some more welding required, I think. I mean, you, you probably could just do it with like, I think most people sort of, it's like cable ties almost that go through the fan and through the cooler and like tie it together. But I wanna just make a little bracket that holds it on there, be a bit nicer. And it gives me something to do to practice some TIG welding. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is a fan. And luckily I happen to have one. So this should actually fit pretty nicely on there, if I can do this with one hand. And if you can see it all, I'm trying not to drop it on my face. But yeah, like that sits pretty well in there, covers. I mean, it's never gonna cover the entire oil cooler because it's like way longer than it is taller. It's like a widescreen oil cooler. It's like 1080p. So, um, <laughs> fucking terrible joke. 
Um, so yeah, it's never going to fit perfectly, but it covers the height of it pretty well. So um, yeah, that should be all right. And I actually bought this about a year and a half ago or something for the GT86, um, but it wouldn't fit on the GT86 or cooler because of the way that that's mounted and everything. Um, so it's actually kind of good that it's finally come in handy. Right, so I've taken the front bumper off so we can get a better look at what we're doing here. Um, originally, I was going to try and just weld the bracket in place while it was all on the car, but it's a pretty bad idea really, isn't it? So let's not be lazy. Let's take it off. I mean, especially when there's plastic behind here, so it's just going to melt as soon as we start welding on that. Right, so I've taken the bracket off and the oil cooler, obviously, um, and this is what we've got to work with. Drawn a few lines on it just to kind of give me a rough guide of where's safe to put stuff and where it's going to get in the way of other things. So, we've got to do a few measurements. This place is an absolute fucking shithole, but ignore that. A few measurements, um, find out how tall everything is. We've got this bit of metal here, which we're going to bend to fit. Three mil thick steel, so maybe a little bit overkill, like two mil would have been fine, but whatever. No harm in that really. And so I've just got to do it like it's going to be flat against there and then come 90 degrees up and then 90 degrees again and go here and that's what's going to hold the fan in place. The options are we either go for some scrap 2 mil stuff that I've got over here that would be a bit more flexible and a bit easier to bend but we've got to piss about cutting it to the right shape and everything. Or we just cut this here and then just weld the vertical bit um, to it. So just weld like an inside corner joint there and just going straight up. Which I think that's probably going to be the easier option. All right, so I'm pretty new to TIG welding. Um, I mean, I'm pretty new to welding in general, and any of this stuff, TIG welding even more so. So you have to forgive if this turns out pretty shit, which it probably will, but um, we'll give it a go. That uh, is pretty fucking ugly. I don't know what was going on there, but something wasn't really working very well. But carry on rather than giving up and starting it again. Fucked up the end bit, but I guess it was alright. It's, uh, it's pretty well stuck on there now at least. Like, it's not going anywhere. Got a few sketchy welds around the side. That weld along the bottom. Yeah, you can't really see very well. It's all pretty horrible, ugly welding, but It'll hold it on there. That's not bad. It's not pretty, again, it's the theme of today's welding, but it should at least work. Alright, so I've drilled and tapped two holes here um, so that we can mount the fan. I'm going to do two more in a second when the drilled battery is finished recharging. But yeah, this is kind of what we've got. It's solid enough, like you can't can't bend it with your hands, so there's no way it's going to come off just in normal use or anything. So, um, yeah, it's turned out alright. It's not super accurate, um, like some of the, the bends and stuff that I did weren't perfect. Like when I mounted the oil cooler to it just now as a test, one of these kind of slopes away from the oil cooler a little bit. It's not anything crazy, but it's just, yeah, would have been nice if they were both completely straight and flush, but whatever. This is, this is me. Stuff never ends up being exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, and like I said, the welds were pretty fucking horrendous. I don't know if you can see them. These bits on the edges weren't too bad. Um, but like these side bits, it was just so awkward to get in there and so awkward to see exactly what you were doing and stuff. It was, it was a pain in the ass. Which is a shame because some of my other welding has been all right, like when I'm just practicing, like it's turned out pretty decent. But actual real world stuff is a bit more of a pain in the ass. Um, I am going to paint it all like before it's finished, um, just to help stop it rusting mainly, but also make it look a little bit more presentable. But yeah, just going to drill and tap two more holes and then start priming it and painting it and then we're pretty much good to go. Right, now these taps that I've done so far have not been perfect because I think I'm using a slightly too big drill bit for this tap. They seem a little bit loose, the, um, the bolts in it, so it's not gone perfectly, but we'll make do with what we've got, as usual. I'm never quite sure if I'm doing these things right anyway. Oh, that's properly on the piss, isn't it? This one's even worse than the others, great. Yeah, it goes in, but like, can you see how much play there is there? Shouldn't have that much, that much play, so I'm assuming I've drilled the hole a tiny bit too big and it probably wants to be like a 4.5mm or something. But whatever, it'll work. It'll do for now. Oh, that's the other thing I need to do is cut these bolts down a bit because they stick too far through, so they'll hit the oil cooler when it's on the back of there. So I'll just chop these down. Alright, so I finished threading the holes and also, as you can see, cut some um, grooves out of it just to allow a bit more sort of flow for the fan because you can see when it's in position, it, these bars do actually get 
quite a bit in the way of where the, um, the air is actually going to be flowing. So, yeah, um, I would have liked to have these further apart, so that's not an issue at all, but I'm at the limit both ends of where I can put these without it getting in the way of anything. So that was the only option, basically, was to cut these, either just cut them completely thin the whole way down or do what I've done and just cut some grooves out that kind of roughly follow the, the profile of the fan. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to paint it now and then we'll get it on the car. All right, so the paint is all dry now and it looks presentable. Looks all right. Like I didn't go to town with masking anything off or anything like that and doing it properly. It's just, yeah, just sprayed the whole thing a bit. All right, so this is what it looks like now. It's on the car. Like I said, I've not got time to actually wire it in today, so that's just gonna sit there for now. Um, but yeah, at least it all works. It was a bit of a nightmare, to be honest, to get the oil cooler back onto the plate because, as you can see, I've made the, um, the bracket very close to the oil cooler and at the bottom it's actually a little bit too close. I didn't appreciate the fact that the oil cooler overhangs the bracket, the original bracket, slightly. So um, yeah, I had to bodge it a bit to get it on, but it is on. Um, you see it's not completely flush. Oh, I need to tighten that bottle up. That'll be one reason why. But yeah, I'm just checking to make sure there's no leaks or anything, because these um, connectors sometimes are a bit of a pain for leaking if you don't do them up super, super tight. So just making sure everything's good. And then we need to top the oil up as well because um, it dripped a lot of oil out when I took this thing off. So yeah, I was um, running for a bit. This is getting nice and hot now, so it is circulating through here. And yeah, then I'll run it to um, run the cable, sorry, to a switch inside. We can turn it on off whenever we want. All right, so we're getting on with wiring the oil cooler fan in. Um, I've just stuck two connectors on here. Also, bit of a fail. I, um, I put some what I thought was heat shrink tubing on here, and then went to heat it up. And turns out it's not a heat shrink, it's just normal PVC tubing, so it's just gone a bit manky and horrible. But yeah, stuck two connectors on here, and then I've got a load of cable that we're going to route, I think probably around there and then up through this little gap here. Um, and then obviously one bit's just going to go to an earth, and then one bit is going to go through there, well it already goes through, there's a grommet in there that you probably can't see, because it's behind the ABS block that goes into the cabin and that'll go to a switch on the dash. Um, but first of all, we're going to put a proper connector on it, one of these little things, so that if I ever want to take the oil cooler or the fan off, I can just disconnect it here, just unplug that like a normal sort of OEM style connector. Because otherwise, I'd have to like cut wires or just pull it and hope that the wires are long enough to put it somewhere. So we'll do it properly, do it properly the first time for once. So yeah, let's crack on with that. Right, so now that's done, we can just literally pop it on and take it apart with ease. So that's a nice convenient thing. And we're just going to test it now, now that all that's wired in. All right, moment of truth. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> I mean, it's working. Oh, fucking hell, that's loud. That is, um, it's going to blow a lot of air through there. I mean, a lot of it's coming out the top here. We could maybe do with putting some kind of just bracket across the back just to stop it, a lot of it blowing straight out the top here. Some of it is going through, but I think we could do with just putting something across the back there. But it works, and we'll just connect that. It stops, so everything is good. All right, I've just put some sleeving over the cables, don't know if you can see, and some little fancy connector things to join all that and keep it all fairly waterproof. Um, these are waterproof anyway, these things. Um, so like, there's no exposed cable anywhere, but it still just looks nice. It's nice when you can make stuff look kind of OEM and professional looking when you've done it yourself. So now we just need to do the same with this bit. Um, we also need to cable tie some stuff. I mean, I know I just said about looking professional, but let's crack out the cable ties. It's time. So I think we're gonna have this go up here like this, and then that will stay vaguely in place up there. Like it's always best um, to follow like where the like any of the factory wiring goes because then you know it's not like going to be somewhere that's too hot or too wet or whatever. Um, so we'll follow this bit up here and then just kind of follow it along under there. I don't know if you can see any of this. Um, but then the problem is none of the factory wiring goes from here back to the, the engine bay. It all comes in right around there. And I really don't want to have to route it all the way around the fucking engine bay. And like it just seems stupid. So we're going to split off from the factory wiring stuff here and just go under there through this convenient wire sized gap that is between the headlight and this plastic cross member thing. And then up there, I guess, maybe just cable tie it around this bracket here 
like nothing's going to be getting too hot or anything there. It'll be covered in that sleeving as well, so it won't rub against any of the metal and cut itself. So yeah, we should be good then. All right, so this is all welded together now. Um, pretty ugly welds as usual, but whatever, it'll work. So let's go make sure it fits. All right, so it's in, it fits about as well as you could expect for me doing something anyway. The, um, the gap at the bottom there is because this whole panel kind of curves out a bit, this whole bit. Um, and I couldn't be bothered to try and take that into account. Like it's bad enough for me just measuring and cutting stuff right on a flat surface, let alone with a curve. So yeah, um, I've just ground these bits back just to cover up the sort of weld marks on the inside from putting the legs on. But yeah, you probably can't really see how it attaches, but I'm sure you get the idea from seeing the legs on the back. So basically I just need to cut some holes like I did in the old one and um, to put switches and stuff in. And obviously sort out the switch for the oil cooler fan. That was kind of the reason why we were doing all this in the first place. So um, yeah, we'll cut. I'm gonna cut two holes for two circular gauges. I've measured it and they should just fit between the legs on the back, so like one there, one there. Um, and then we'll have the switches across the bottom. I'm not super happy with how it turned out because the spray paint bottle started just spitting like big lumps of paint out towards the end. So like the final coat of paint I gave it has ended up with all these little dots all over it, which is a bit annoying, but I can't be asked to like sand it off and paint it all again now. I might do it at some point, I'll see how it looks once it's actually in the car and out in the daylight, but for now it'll do. It's still a lot better than the old one was. Um, I've not actually got the sensors in yet for the diff and the transmission. Um, I don't know if I'm going to bother doing the transmission one, but I do want a temperature sensor in the diff just to see how hot that oil is getting. Um, it's not necessary or anything, like most people don't bother, but I kind of just fancy it out of curiosity really, just to see if it's like destroying the oil that's in there and like how often I need to change it really. I mean, it'd be good to just change it after every event, but I can never be bothered. It gets pretty expensive. So yeah, um, that's kind of just in, but not going to work yet. The oil pressure and oil temperature one obviously will work because we've been using that before. And now we're going to have two switches down here for the, I'm trying to remember what one of them was for. Oh yeah, for the left foot braking thing and for the oil cooler fan. So let's just double check that the oil cooler fan works now that everything's wired in in like its final positions. It's going to be that way up so we can switch it up. Yep, definitely works. You can actually see the lights on the dash get dimmer when you switch it on. So I think that's drawing a fair bit of power. You can see everything just suddenly flash on and off. Yeah, so I think that's definitely something that we need to remember to turn off when um, the engine's not running, because that could drain the battery pretty quick. Although it says it only draws like nine amps or something, but then there's quite a bit more than anything else that I've ever wired into a car. Normally the stuff I'm doing is like one or two amps or something, just for like a LED or something. So yeah, um, we'll get this all mounted properly and then see how it looks. Right, it's in, but I don't know if you can tell, I uh, made a bit of a stupid mistake and didn't let the paint dry for quite long enough. Like, so it's still a little bit tacky, and as I've like pushed it in around the edges here, it's kind of just wiped a little bit of the top layer of the paint off, and as we tighten stuff up as well. So uh, yeah, not ideal. Uh, like I said, it kind of needed redoing anyway, just because of all like, the clumps of paint that got spat out on that final coat, so I definitely will take it off and sand it and paint it again. But for now, at least for the sake of this video, it's done. Uh, it's in, everything works. I mean, not at the moment because the car's not turned on, but it works. And uh, yeah, we'll call that a success. Move on to the next thing. All right, actually, I think that'll do. Like I was gonna carry on doing some other bits and bobs, but I think this video has already been long enough. So we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, there is other stuff to be done, which I'll do in the new year, but this has taken like three or four weeks to get all these jobs done. So yeah, it's meant the video's taken ages to come out as well. So sorry about that. But hopefully you appreciate kind of like quality over quantity. Like I didn't want to just pump out one video on each of these like tiny little jobs. It would have just been a bit stupid. So yeah, I've tried to cram them all in one video, but it has meant it's kind of gone the opposite end of the spectrum now where it's just a lot of stuff all in one video and it's taken forever to actually do. So I don't know, I, I need to find like a happy medium, I guess, between the two, but that'll do for this one. Um, there will be a drift day coming up very soon in the 350 with Luke and his 350 as well um, at Rockingham. They're doing one just after Christmas. so. Be going to that it's on the 27th but at least some of these jobs will help for that drift day as well like i won't have to take the fuse out every time i want a left foot brake and the oil temps should be a bit lower with that fan and everything like that so it should be good but yeah that'll be the next video rocking drift day so see you there